Okay, so <laughs> to me, this is the most difficult part of the day, and that is starting uh, just you know get everything going. But anyways, got uh, more queens in. The uh, uh, yeah, so anyways, got these in yesterday. More queens, and so now what I'm doing today is that I set up. You see, bees are bees are flying really, really well. I set up uh, a handful of these for splitting right away, and uh, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, try to find those real quick, and uh, I should actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'll have an exclude. anyway, look at, look at this though, like, look at, look at how great these bees are looking, I mean, that's, that's, yeah, really, really good looking bees. Um, get that smoker going again. But uh, yeah, things are things are looking good. And then I also went and supered some. Oh, here's the one. So here's the one I'm gonna split. Uh, I'll just show you the get my smoker going again here. This here is a perfect example of a uh, uh, of bees. I'm gonna throw an extra super on because. What's going to happen is they're not strong enough for me to be comfortable splitting them. But we'll come back in about two weeks, three weeks, and uh, do some splits off of those. So, but here, yeah, like look at look at this. This is just two two full boxes, just just completely packed like this, and so. What I'm going to do whoops, is I shook the queen. I actually happened to find her by accident. And so she's on the bottom. Shook, uh, well, once I put her on the bottom, put a queen excluder between the two. And so what I'm going to do later tonight is I'm going to come by and uh, take this box off, put a new one on fill it with feed, but I'm going to put a queen in here right now so I don't have to worry about messing with that later today. My apologies for the dead air. My days in broadcasting come back to haunt me. Can't have dead air! Even if you're not talking and giving any kind of uh, good judgment or, I mean, any good value in what you're saying, keep talking. Uh, so, okay, let's see here see where it's kind of a pain. You know, on one hand, I like wearing gloves this time of year just to avoid extra stings. But on the other hand, let's see here. Now, see, in a situation like this, all of the uh, attendant bees, except for one, are dead. Which I really, whenever I order queens, I always prefer if it's just the queen with loose attendants. But, yeah, anyways. The queen looks good though, she looks in good condition. Gonna pop the pop the cork out of here real quick. Sometimes I'll accidentally split the box, but that's pretty easy to put back together. Actually, that'll work in my, in my to my advantage. Get that piece of cork out of there. Okay, and once again, whoops! Once again, when you're putting in a clean always make sure that the cage is facing out so that the other bees can feed her and make sure that she's taken care of during uh, the period of them uh, doing a bit of a tricky a risky move there I was getting shaking the rest of those uh, dead 
dead assistance in there. So anyways, yeah, so now just go pry the frames apart a little bit and slip her, slip her down in there. There, close that up, done. We'll come pick that split up a little later, later today and a little later this evening. Okay, just to reiterate again, uh, I went through these yesterday. The ones that are strong enough to split, all the bees were shaken down into the bottom, so you know the queen is there. Queen excluder, the box back, you wanna make sure obviously they're equalized with brood as well. And then left a second lid, and I'm also leaving an additional box so that when I come back a little later this evening, that gets taken off, put on the truck. I also have the queen in her cage with uh, candy. It gives about a two, three day window. Uh, put in there already. So all I have to do, transport this, take this top box, put it into on the truck, put the new box on, new lids there already, put that on, close them up, splits done. And so it makes things a little bit more efficiently. Hopefully that kind of uh, communicates clearly the, uh, the process I'm using this time. Okay, uh, we'll show you the process, or I'll show you the process here real quickly of what I'm doing, looking for uh, strength. And I mean, I'll tell you what's amazing, seeing the buds, the buds come out here on the trees. I think that's out of the camera's view, but... Uh, okay, so this might be a good candidate what I'm doing, if they look, I always like to take a peek at the bottom box anyways. Ah. Never judge the strength of bees by just the top. Take a look at the bottom too, see? That's a, that'll end up being a decent, a decent hive, but definitely we do not want to split that one. So, what I will be doing is putting that one back together. I might, because remember, I'm having, remember, I'm having to think about three weeks out. And uh, by the time pollen comes in from the almond blooms, uh, I can see this going to a third box. So, we're going to have to do that. couple of frames of foundation in each box feeder because once again this isn't for honey production this is for increase which a uh, common question is do you get honey from almonds and uh, you can get nectar but as a general rule it's really bitter and is not good for human consumption of that so this is uh, for increase once again decent looking uh, decent looking box of bees but once again just to be on the safe side we're going to uh, crack it open and see whether it's telling us the truth and it is. I mean, look at this. Look at this. The second box, decent. Once again, we can tip underneath. See, it's a good population underneath. Um, that one, you know what? Let me check here real quick. Let's see what the bottom box looks like. Bottom box, bottom of the bottom box is okay. Uh, plant safe. You know what I might actually do with this one is turn this into my uh, queen bank. Because I'm going to have some extra queens available 
and I may we'll do a clip of the process of that here in just a little bit. Okay, so here real quickly is uh, what we're going to do to put up a queen bank. So this is a colony that, I mean, obviously it's a good strength. Uh, the bottom box is pretty, pretty decently full as well. But uh, what I'm going to do, smoke these girls down, put a queen excluder, because, you know, it's still early in the year. The nights are still cold, so you want to... We want a colony that's going to give off some good insulation. Uh, I've got an empty box here. Forgive the organized chaos of the uh, bee truck, but hey, it's got everything I need right now. Okay, and uh, so then, take your gloves off. We are going to take these out and uh, just put them, remember, screen facing out but we're just gonna arrange them on here and uh, I've got a pry they've got these glued on so that they don't tip over in in uh, shipping so uh, but anyways I'll up uh, I'll do a quick video here of the finish and here is the finished product uh, and so all we're gonna do is bear with me here I'm not sure why I didn't get my tripod out but anyways good dude well actually hang on I'm gonna put this uh, you can see here once again with one hand pain in the butt but already you can see the bees coming up they'll uh, they'll tend to them I'll we'll put this plastic over notice uh, once again all the screens are accessible for the bees to come up and uh, make sure that they're feeding feeding the queen so anyway put that plastic on and provide a little bit of a extra ventilation Bear with me here. There. It's like that. Empty box. Even better if you have a shallow box so that you don't have as much avoid space. But, you know, once again, and then of course the bees here, we're just going to shake those off on the ground in front of the hive. And. The uh, gentleman who was kind enough, I uh, shipped the, the queens to him. He uh, wrote the tropical babes on there. I'm actually just going to leave that box in there too because that'll be handy to use when I come back. But anyway, so there's our queen bank. Key thing now is to not forget where it is, <laughs> which, which can be a struggle all in of it. Okay, so I'm about uh, 30 minutes uh, from home. Had to pull over to the rest area here because I've been drinking a lot of coffee and I won't go into any further detail than that unless you want me to. No, I'm just um, but anyways, I was going to do a video last night after I got in from moving the bees <laughs> into the almonds, uh, the new splits, and I decided against it because I was, I was cranky, I was tired, and uh, the reason I was going to do the video then was because I thought, okay, you know what, maybe it you know, gives a real depiction of the challenges that you face, not only in business, but uh, uh, also um, uh, in beekeeping. It's kind of like with the restaurant. You know, we, uh, my wife and I have a restaurant. There's a lot of people who have incredibly romanced romanticized ideas about owning a restaurant and there's a lot of great things about it I would say that uh, my two favorite things of the restaurant are our staff and also our customers uh, we are incredibly fortunate with our staff incredibly fortunate the community that we're a part of um, but inherently owning a business especially a restaurant as many moving parts as there is there are days of major frustration and kind of the same thing with bees you know last night I'm moving bees and uh, you know I'm tired I'm sore uh, I've got bees incessantly buzzing in my ear I'm getting stung uh, everything sticky from syrup that's spilled and feeders that have broke anyways it just just the, the reality the reality that I have faced over and over again 
and oftentimes in those realities I wonder why the heck am I uh, doing this to myself only to wake up the next morning and say I'm ready to do it again <laughs> and so anyways I would just encourage you that uh, you know when you're looking at beekeeping on a business side because you know this whole thing of people asking me uh, uh, being interested about learning the business side of it and that's certainly a favorite topic of mine uh, but mental tenacity uh, and just the willingness to have a high pain tolerance, <laughs> not only physically in beekeeping, but also emotionally. Uh, because if you talk to anybody in agriculture, you talk to anybody in business, uh, there are days, no matter how long you've been doing it, where you're just... Uh, Kathy Truitt, or Truitt Kathy, the uh, founder of Chick-fil-A said it best. Uh, he said people come up to him and ask him, how much would you take for your business? And he says, well, if you ask me on the right day, I might just give it to you. And that, that pretty well encapsulates business ownership. I wouldn't have it any other way. I have chosen this lifestyle. Both Amanda and I, we love it. But part of that is also having days where you just feel like uh, throwing in the towel and never coming back. Uh, I think I think the only difference is is that the more you do it or the longer you do it, the more you realize what those emotions are, and uh, hopefully you develop some patience to just get a good night's sleep uh, and not uh, make hasty decisions. So, but anyways, yeah, bees are looking good. We're gonna go back in about three weeks and uh, check the ones that we supered, and because uh, chances are pretty good that those will actually be able to be taken off as splits at that point. So. Anyways, that's the uh, end of this video. Hopefully these are somewhat informational for you. Uh, but uh, anyways, thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll catch you a little later.